Africa Inland Church Milimani Nairobi. We are a biblically mature community of believers worshiping and serving Jesus Christ. We exist to glorify God by connecting people to Christ and his family, helping them to discover their life's mission and positively impacting our world. Guided by five biblical pillars, namely worship, ministry, evangelism, fellowship and discipleship, we are dedicated to honor God in worship, sharing the good news of Christ, international discipleship and biblical teaching, as well as excellence in service to God and humanity. Led by the Reverend Stephen Mairori, we have a team of seasoned and dedicated ministers. Reverend Matthew Okeo, Reverend Sylvester Kirwa, Pastor Rachel Kisula, Reverend Luke Odiambo, Reverend Stephen Munyambu, and Reverend Hosea Mite. We are anchored on the Rock of Ages and geared to the times to minister the love of Jesus Christ to a hurting global community. We are AIC Milimani, Nairobi. We are dedicated to reach you online, on radio and on TV. Welcome to this online broadcast. The King bless you. Praise the Lord and welcome to our service today, uh, the 24th of May, 2020. We are glad that the Lord God has given you an opportunity to be part of this service either online at home or through the Truth FM 90.7. And uh, we want to thank God because of this time. Please allow me to pray even as we begin this service today. Our God and our Father, we are grateful that you can give us an opportunity to hear your word and to be part of this service today. And we pray that, Lord, you are going to guide our thoughts, you are going to guide our minds, and you are also going, Lord, to give us a receptive heart so that, Lord, we will receive and implement that which you are going to teach us today in this service. So we bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And now... Allow me to welcome the praise and worship to come so that they can worship the Lord uh, with a number even as we continue to give God the glory in this worship service. This far we thank the Lord. The grace of the Lord has brought us this far and we trust the grace of the Lord to continue leading us. Karibuni sana AIC Milimani. Wale ambamu natukisikiza Truth FM. We pray that the Lord will minister to you from wherever you are. Kwa wale ambao mnatutanzama Facebook, YouTube, everywhere, within and without the country, we pray that the Lord is going to minister unto you. And as we go before the Lord in worship, we want to welcome you. Feel free to worship with us. And as our sister Lillian Mwekali comes to lead us forth, why would you join with us as we lift the name of the Lord in this prayer? As we go before the Lord, bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and all that is within me, give him praise. For the Lord is good, his mercy endures forever. We bless you for you. We know you are here and you're with us and you will continue with us. And still in this, you're walking through with us. And we are assured of, your, of our victory. And for that, Lord, we bow in worship. We praise you for who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Join us in welcoming our sister Lillian Mwekali as she leads us in worship this morning. Praise God, church. Amen. Amen. As we begin to worship God, just remember that right now, in the good times and in the bad times, He is on the throne. Oh, 
great we say
good God. Forever, author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Lord, we'll sing how great, how great is our God. He's a great God. He's a great God. He reaches you here and there. Let's join together as we welcome our choir, my beloved choir, to bless the Lord with one number. And the Lord bless you as you continue in worship.
Thank you, Mabalozi Choir, for praising the Lord with a song. And I want to take us through the intercessory prayers. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you for this wonderful day. We want to remain connected unto you, Lord, for, you as, for safety and for strength. You are our refuge in times of trouble. We want to seek for your guidance, Lord, in our homes, in our places where we, are, we feel isolated, Lord. And we want to pray that you continue magnifying yourself in our lives, Lord. Take care of us for those who are in hospitals, for those who are traveling from one end to the other, Lord. We still commit them before your able hands. We also come before you, Lord, because of our church, the United Church, wherever we are, Lord. We know that it is not a very pleasing time, but we are encouraged by your word that you still remain in the throne. Continue, Lord, leading us from one level of believing you to the next, Lord. We pray for fellowship even online, Lord, that one day this will come to an end and we'll continue to meet again. We worship you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. And uh, this time we want to welcome um, the servant of God who will come to speak to us. But before I welcome him, uh, please allow me to read from the book of Jonah. If you can open your Bible to the book of Jonah. Uh, Jonah will be reading chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. Jonah, chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. Let us read. But to Jonah, this seemed very wrong, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord, Isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? That is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, Is it right for you to be angry? And that is the word of the Lord. And now I take this opportunity to invite uh, our brother, the Reverend uh, Matthew Zoke, who is bringing us the word this morning, that the Lord is going to use him. Karibu sana mchungaji. Praise the Lord, church. I'm so delighted and so grateful that the Lord has given me another time to share with you his word. It is a great joy to join with you today. And I want to tell you, Please welcome as we listen to what the Lord has placed in my heart. My name is Reverend Matthew Okeo, and I'm glad to be here to share the word of the Lord with you. And today, the Lord has put in my heart to share with us about experiencing God's grace, gracious nature in time of difficulties. Experiencing God God's gracious nature. That is very important to understand. God's gracious nature in times of difficulties. You know, we have listened to very many attributes about God. We can talk about God's characteristics, his attribute, and we might ask ourselves several questions. And God's attributes are so good and speak to his nature, like eternity of God, eternality of God, God's of mercy, God's goodness. We talk about the omnipotent, omnipotent God that is omnipresence, omnipotence, grace, the holiness of God, the all-knowing God, the righteous God, a just God, a sovereign God, all these talk about the attribute of God. But today, I want us to look at his graciousness, his gracious nature. Because today, the big question that we are asking ourselves, that if God is so gracious, why is he punishing us? 
And you see, very many people have painted God as a sadist. God who will rejoice when his enemy is in trouble. We have painted God to look at, to look at him as if he is all the judge, just waiting for us there to make a mistake and he will be on us. He will be on us. And the problem and the difficulty that we are going through because of these pandemics has made us also to sometimes look at God as a God who's a judging God, judgmental, and is rejoicing in our trouble. But I want us to look at something about God's gracious nature. And to look at this, there is, not, there is no better passage for me to look at than reading from the book of, from the book of Jonah and to read the story about Jonah as we look at him so that we may be able to experience and understand his gracious nature. In the passage before us today, Jonah calls this a conversation prayer. He was praying before the Lord and it was the scene that it was in the sense that he was speaking to God, but this was more of complaint. And he was complaining. The little bit here is that Jonah was expressing his attitude of anger towards God. But one thing which is nice about this prayer of Jonah is that at least Jonah was so honest with God. He was so honest by speaking honestly. Speaking honestly to God. And as a result of that, he opens the window of his heart so that you will be able to see exactly the nature of the prophet of God. The black spot in his heart as he speaks to God, his attitude towards the Ninevites. You will notice that Jonah was so honest to God that God was able to listen to him. That's the little bit, the, the beauty of Jonah, Jonah's prayer. Many times we go before the Lord and we always try to paint a picture, no, refusing to speak our heart to God. But Jonah here was open and honest to God to express how he's feeling. And the scripture says, but Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry. He prayed to the Lord, oh God, is this not what I said when I was still at home? That is why I was so quick to flee to Tarsus. I knew that you are a gracious and a compassionate God. Jonah knew the graciousness of God's nature. And if you see Jonah's heart, you will look at it in his prayer here. Is that Jonah said, I said. Verses 4, verses 2, he said, I said. You know, he tried to correct God, but the Lord didn't listen. Apparently, Jonah had lectured God when the Lord initially called him to preach to the Nineveh. Jonah informed God that Nineveh deserved judgment and he was the wrong person for the job. Therefore, he wanted God to conform to his plan. But God did not. So, so Jonah is telling God, I said it. Notice that word, I said it, God. Another word that we need to see here is, I fled. When God refused to listen to Jonah's request, the prophet took matters into his own hands. And Jonah decided to thwart God's plan by refusing to participate. His confession clearly revealed his heart. He ran from God because he did not want the Assyrians 
to even have a chance to repent. And we see this today. Sometimes we don't want to share the word of the Lord with the people we don't like. Jonah fled. And he say, he's telling God in his prayer that I fled. Another statement I want you to know, to see here, is that Jonah is telling God, I knew. <laughs> I knew. Jonah was mad because he knew God was always good. Have you ever become angry in your spirit because God blessed someone else? In fairness, Jonah did grasp the greatness of God. He, did, he was aware about God's gracious nature. He knew about God's greatness. And that is why he's saying, I knew you, God. I knew. That's why I was running away. I didn't like it. Another statement I want us to see in this Jonah prayer is that, take my life. Take my life. Jonah valued his reputation more than God's reputation. The prophet petitioned God to take his life because he felt he lost the credibility with the Jews by preaching to their enemy. To Jonah, his reputation was more important than compassion to those that are perishing in their sin. Someone might say that, but he went. Yes, he did go and he preached. And God did exactly what he was supposed to do as God. And that made him so hungry. Which means Jonah outwardly obeyed. But while he was obeying, he was harboring hatred. He had an inward rebellion. And in thought he complained to God and said, I don't like your goodness to our enemies. You know, my friends, people have painted God at this moment as God who rejoices when his enemies are in trouble. And God who is rejoicing when we are being swept away by calamity. We see his, we see his, judge, his just part, that is a judging God because of what the world has done. They have neglected him. We are living in a perverted generation. And therefore, it is time for God to bring judgment. Yes, God will always judge. But I want you to remember one thing about God. that He may have allowed this pandemic. But that does not mean that God has approved this pandemic. He has not approved it. And that's why I want, to, I want us to understand his gracious nature so that as we go through this problem, we will be able to experience his love. We will be able to experience him. And this will bring hope to us who believe in him to know that even after this, there is life. And if you look at Jonah, sometimes you must... You might be so much judgmental of Jonah. But you need to ask yourself, why was God judging Nineveh? And you see, if you looked at what this country is, the Nineveh, then you will actually not judge Jonah harshly. If you look at the message of Naum, Prophet Naum, the message concerning the pending destruction of Nineveh, the Lord's word to the Syrian is a serious word. This is what the word of the Lord is saying in Nahum chapter 2, verses 13. It says that, I am against you. I will burn up your, I will burn up your chariots in smoke, and the, and the sword will devour your young lions. I will leave you no spray on the earth. The voice of your messengers will no longer be heard. God was obviously angry with the Ninevites. And now we reveal this. Why? Why? You need to understand that the Ninevites Nineveh, the, the, the had been long enemy of Judah and Israel, the people of God. 
In 722 BC, the Assyrians defeated the northern kingdom of Israel, destroying its capital, Samaria. In 701 BC, the Assyrian nearly conquered Jerusalem, the capital of Judah. And in the text of Naum, the text provided a clue regarding God's anger with the Nineveh. In chapter 3, verses 1, the word of the Lord says, Woe to the city of blood, full of lies, full of plundered, never without victims. Nenaiv was a city of violence, known for its brutal treatment of those it conquered. These are people who are notoriously bad. If they capture you, they will remove your hands, they will gouge out your eyes, they will skin you alive. And they were so evil that someone says that sometimes they will take their enemy and pin them down and have a strong man come in, pick the tongue out and pull it out. This is a violent nation. And they were so brutal that you would feel that Jonah was right in his attitude and in, and in his anger. This is a city that were very proud because they were well off, because of the wealth they had, they were very proud and they were thinking about no one else. That it was, a, it was just a matter of them and them alone. They don't care about who you are. And they were also strong. And they were enemies. They, have, they actually destroyed the Judah and the Israelites. So Jonah was thinking about himself that I, how can I preach to these people? How can I tell them about the gospel? I know they might repent, but the kind of God I know, the kind of God I serve, I know is so gracious that he will forgive them. But this is a nation that deserves to be punished. So Jonah was so honest to God. And of course, even you and I, we know we can sometimes rejoice when our enemies are in trouble. We will even say, serve them well. And today, you know, there's a lot of evil going on in the society, in our generation, that it is true that we can say, God, come and judge the situation. We have allowed the world to come into the church. We have reduced God to a God who can, be, can accommodate our evil desires. And we have rationalized everything. And therefore, we can say, yes, it is time that God is judging us. But I want you to know one thing today about God's gracious nature in the midst of the difficult times. Because our God's gracious nature cannot allow him to rejoice when innocent people are suffering, when innocent children are going without food, when innocent children are locked in. God is not happy. He's gracious. Though he will not allow sin to continue. God's gracious nature does three things which I see in him. God's gracious nature brings out his mercy and compassionate love towards the wicked generation. Because he's so gracious, he's so loving, that nature brings out his mercy and compassionate love towards the wicked generation. So that he will give them a second chance. He will give them opportunity to understand who they are. That is why if you read, us, or if you read the book of Hosea, chapter 2, verses 19, 
He says, I will betroth you in righteousness and justice, in love and compassion. He tells Hosea to marry a prostitute and to be faithful to her as an example of God's faithfulness to a faithless people. He's telling Hosea, you go and get married to that prostitute because I want to teach you about my faithfulness to the faithless people. The Lord said to me, go show your love to your wife again. Though she is loved by another and is an adulteress, love her as the Lord loves the Israelites. Though they turn to other gods and love the sacred rising cakes. Hosea chapter 3 verses 1. He's telling me to go and love again this woman who has left me and have gone with other men. Go and love her. Show her that you love her even though he has abandoned you. That can only happen when you are so gracious. To overlook that which has been done against you. Our God is so gracious that he's sending us. That it doesn't matter what has happened to you. I'm giving you a second chance. In all this trouble, I am still gracious. I'm still gracious to you. I still care about you. I still have mercy. I have a compassionate love towards you. My friends, my brothers and sisters, our God is so gracious. Our God is so merciful. And in this time of difficulties, his love still stands. His mercy is still real because of his gracious nature. God's gracious nature will also show him as a slow to get hungry towards the wicked humanity. If you read the book of Exodus 34, verses 6 to 7, God described himself to Moses after he forgave the people for the worship of the golden calf, saying, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin, yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He does not leave the guilty unpunished, yet he is loving, he is faithful. This God of ours, in his anger, he is very slow to act towards this rebellious generation. People are talking about the end of the world. Yes, I believe the end of the world is nearing, but I don't know when. Because it's only the Lord who knows. But I want to tell you, even if you are living in a most wicked generation, God's anger is very slow. He's giving us time. Yes, he will not leave the guilty and punished. But he is a forgiving God, he is a loving God, and he is a caring God who is willing to give us time to recognize who he is to us. At this time, I want to encourage us to go back and think about God's gracious nature and think on how he is feeling about this situation. I want to believe that he has allowed this situation to be the way it is, but he has not approved it. Therefore, if we know it has no, he has not approved this situation, then let us relax and reflect on who he is and go back to him. Because he's a gracious God who is slow to anger and giving opportunity to the perverted, to the perverted generation a wicked generation. Can you imagine the Israelites abandoning him to worship the calf after all that is done and yet he is still telling them that I love you and my faithfulness will not be compared 
with anything that you have done, you have done against me. Why? Because I am a gracious God. It's a wonderful nature that can encourage us to keep on trusting him with our situations. To keep on allowing him to work in our situation because he's a gracious God. He's so gracious even to those people who are perverted. You can call them. You can see it around you. You can see how they call God names, how they have turned him into, uh, into something you can manipulate. But his graciousness towards them still stand. The third thing I want to say about God's gracious nature, which is going to be the, the last one, is that God's gracious nature brings out his faithful love to withhold judgment for those who repent. God's gracious nature will bring out his faithful love to withhold judgment for those who repent. You know, our God will forgive and forget. And that one doesn't mean that God is a forgetting God. It only means that he knows exactly what you have done, but he has chosen not to hold it against you. You know, God is not like us. Because me, if you offend me, I will forgive you conditionally. The condition I will give is that you will not do it again against me. Because if you do it again or do another thing again, I will remind you of what you did to me. And that is not how our, that is not how our God is. Our God will always forgive he will with all the judgment. And you remember, this is what Jonah did not want. That's why he told God, I knew you, God. I knew how you are. How dare you forgive the Ninevites? People who have mistreated us. People who have killed us. God, are you serious? You are calling me to go and preach repentance to my enemies. How do you think my community will look at me? Because I know you, God, you will forgive them if they repent. And that is what happened. When the Ninevites heard about the message, they repented. They repented. And God forgave them. And that's why Jonah said, God, I don't want to see. I want to just, I want just to die. He says, no, Lord, take my life. For it is better for me to die than to live. It is better for me to preserve my reputation but to see my enemies being forgiven. How many of you will rejoice when your enemies go to heaven? You know, there are, so very many, there are very many people who have prayed against their enemy. They have said, may you die because of this. Some of us are seated somewhere and they are willing that so and so has betrayed me and the only thing I wish for this person is bad. If he dies, I will rejoice. And we have rejoiced in our enemies' trouble sometime. But I want to remind you, that is not the nature of God. God is a God who will withhold his judgment to those who repent. So prepare yourself that there are some people who have actually not repented against you. But they have repented about their sins and you will meet them in heaven. If you also repented of your sin. Because God is a gracious God. He's a loving God. In Joel chapter 2 verses 13, the prophet warns of the coming judgment. But reminds the people that it is not too late to repent. Because God's repentance. Because of God's reputation, he tells them, rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relent from sending calamity. God is not quick to send his calamity. He's bounding in love. 
He wants his people to be with him. And he will do everything possible to bring you back to himself. Because he is a gracious God. He is a loving God. He is a forgiving God. He is God who loves those who repent. I want to challenge you this time that as you go, as we go through this period, think about God as a gracious God. A God who is loving. A God who is forgiving. Yes, we have heard about very many things that are going around the world. Some of them are so wicked. Some of them you don't want to see. We hear about very many things happening. That will make you think that really, how wicked are we? But we have not reached the level of Sodom and Gomorrah. We have not reached the level of Nenevites. And God was able to forgive them. Let us not think of God as a sadist. He is God who relents from sending calamities. If we will only repent. That's why he's saying, let us rent our heart and not our garments. There's no need for me to tear my garments and say that God, I'm it is only renting my heart, giving my heart to him, telling Lord, we are sorry, please. Let us be able to intercede on behalf of the world. Let us be able to know that our God is so gracious that in the midst of all these things, there is hope. Yes, he's coming and let us not fear about his coming. Let us not fear also about dying. But let us know that he is in charge. The governments are trying. The governments of the world are trying all over. The health workers, the experts, the researchers are trying. But I want to tell you one thing that our gracious God is aware and is going to intervene, is going to intervene at the right time. And in fact, he's already intervening. That is why I want to encourage you to come out and start rejoicing that he is God who loves you despite who you are. Maybe you think you are so bad, but I want to tell you that is not what God sees about you. It doesn't matter how your life has been. What matter is, are you able to rent your heart? Are you able to go to him and ask him that God here I am and know how gracious you are and you are going to do it for me. He will do it. And he's doing it. He's going to do it. So he's a loving God. I am glad to be associated with this kind of God. I am glad to be called a child of a gracious God. And I'm glad that I want to experience his graciousness in this time of trouble. This is the God I would want to sing to. Because it says, I love Jesus because he first loved me. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Yes. I love Jesus because he first loved me. And he loved me unconditionally. He did not tell me go and behave like this. He did not tell me go and change this. He did not tell me go and be like this. He just said, please come as you are. Just as I am. Without one plea. I came to him. And he changed me. He made me. And he's the God who is going to take me through this hard time. And I say, God, take me through this hard time. And also allow me to continue with you even when the time is good. Allow me not to forget your graciousness even when everything is okay. I know, God, we are going to go through the valleys 
and the mountains. And I think today, all of us are in the valley. And I want to tell you that down in the valley is where you learn what is going to encourage you when you are on top of the mountain. Because on the top of the mountain, you will see the view and you will be so happy to know that God is a gracious God because he will have taken us through this. Let us take our responsibility and stick with him. And let us not paint him as a God who is only waiting for us to do sin and then punish us. Oh, he's a gracious God. You might have been down, down, down. Please just stand up and look at him and he will hold your hands. He has done that to very many. He did that to Samson. He did that to Abram. He did that to Peter and even Jonah who is actually expressing himself to die. God would have taken his life. But God, if you read down there, God taught him a lesson. How gracious is this God? And that's the graciousness of our God that I want to introduce you to so that as you go through this difficult time, you will remember one thing, that he is gracious. May this gracious God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Reverend Okeo, for blessing us. We are so grateful that we have a gracious God. And even during these difficult times, during these turbulent times, you can experience his grace. I want to invite you wherever you are, if you haven't experienced the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, if he hasn't touched your heart, he hasn't come to your heart, I want to pray with you that you will accept him now. Would you say this with me? Lord Jesus, I want to experience your grace today. Come to my heart now. Thank you so much for forgiving me of my sin, and thank you for coming into my heart. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, please, I want to ask that you can call the number on your screen. Uh, who will be able to respond to you and, and pray with you uh, even more. Again, may the Lord bless you and thank you, Reverend, uh, for leading us so well in God's word. Church, it's our time now to respond to God's graciousness uh, in giving. As we do at AIC Milimani, we joyfully give because we know our God. God has a mission in this world, and we are part of his team. We want to touch the lives of many. We want to reach out to those who are vulnerable, and uh, we want to, be, uh, to do our part as members of his family. So it's our time now to give, and so uh, I will give through our baby number. It is 809109. And if you are giving your regular offering, just write offering as the account. If you are giving your tithe, write tithe as, as your account or thanksgiving as well as in your account. At this time, uh, the Hill Voices will be blessing us with, with a number as we give. Welcome, let's give joyfully to the Lord. Master, the tempest is raging. The billows are tossing high. The sky is all shadowed with darkness. No shelter, no help is mine. Carest thou not that we perish? How canst thou lie asleep? When each moment so madly is threatening, a grave in the hungry deep. The winds and the waves shall obey thy will. Peace, be still, be still, be still. Whether the wrath of the storms or sea, or demons or men or whatever it be, no waters can swallow the ship where lies the master of ocean and earth and skies. The ocean sweetly obey thy will. Peace, be still, be 
peace be still. They all shall sweetly obey thy will. Peace, peace be still. Master, with anguish of spirit, I bow in my grief today. The depths of my sad heart are troubled. Awaken and save, I pray. Torrents of sin and of anguish sweep on my sinking soul. And I perish, I perish, dear master. Oh, hasten and take control. The winds and the waves shall obey thy will. Peace be still, be still, be still. Whether the wrath of the storms or sea, or demons or men or whatever it be, no waters can swallow the ship where lies the master of ocean and all the skies. They all shall sweetly obey thy will. Still, peace be still, they all shall sweetly obey thy will. Peace, peace be still. Master, the terror is over, the element sweetly rest. A sun in the calm lake is mirrored. And heavens within my breast Linger, O oh blessed Redeemer Leave me alone no more And with joy I shall make the blessed harbor And rest on the peaceful shore The winds and the waves shall obey thy will Peace be still, be still, be still. Whether the wrath of the storms or sea, or demons or men or whatever it be, no waters can swallow the ship where lies the master of ocean and earth and skies. They all shall sweetly obey thy will. They all shall sweetly obey thy will. Peace, peace, be still. Thank you very much, Hill Voices, for blessing us. And church, before we bring our service to closure, I want to share one announcement. And that is here at AIC Milimani, we normally have our Thanksgiving a year. So our first Thanksgiving will be on the first week of June. That is the 7th of June. My prayer is that you'll prepare yourself for this day. Amidst these challenges and turbulent times, I think this would be our time to show our gratefulness to God as we look at the past, what God has done for us. And as we anticipate the future, let's just come with our hearts full of thanks to God and give as well joyfully and thankfully to him. So that will be on the 7th of June. I pray that you will prepare and pray uh, for this day. Now we want to thank everyone who has joined us in this service, those who've joined us online and those who've uh, listened to us through Truth FM 90.7. May the Lord bless you so much. I want to wish you all the Lord's blessings uh, throughout the week that we will walk with him and will be good ambassadors. Join me in prayer now as we bring the service to closure. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful. Thank you for blessing us with your word today. We are so grateful that we have a gracious God, a God who doesn't pay us for all that we've done, but instead a God who gave his own son, Jesus, to come and took our place so that we can receive your grace through him. We are so grateful and we are indebted to you. We say, may your name be blessed. 
Thank you for this wonderful service. And now as we disperse, I pray, Lord, that you will dismiss us with your blessings. May this be a great week uh, to all our members and to, 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 to your people, oh God. That, Father, will experience you during the week, that you will walk with us. We give you praise and honor, for it is in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ I have prayed. And God's people said, Amen. Now you can join me as we all say the grace together. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And the Lord bless you so much. Thank you. Good morning, children. I hope you had a nice week and that you've been paying attention to what your parents tell you and what God says that we should do like we learned. And you remember last Sunday I gave you a promise? Do you remember what I told you? That we are going to see those miracles that Moses and Aaron performed to at least convince Pharaoh to let the children of God go. And this was after our lesson, which was Moses sees God's power. In that lesson, you remember Moses, uh, Moses and Aaron performed one miracle. You remember Aaron threw his rod, he changed to a snake, which swallowed all the magician snakes. And we thought that would convince Pharaoh, but his heart hardened. So today, I want to introduce you to you the first two plagues that Moses and Aaron performed on Pharaoh and his people to convince him to let the children of Israel go. So our lesson today, therefore, is the plague of blood and the plague of frogs. The plague of blood and the plague of frogs. So I want us to read from Exodus chapter 7, verse 20 to 21. And also chapter 8, verse 5 to 8. Children, you have your Bibles, I'm sure. Exodus chapter 7, verse 20 to 21. In chapter 8, just a few verses I'll read for you. Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord had commanded. He raised his staff in the presence of Pharaoh and his officials and struck the water of the Nile. All the water was changed into blood. The fish in the Nile died. And the river smelled bad that the Egyptians could not drink its water. Blood was everywhere in Egypt. But the Egyptian magicians did the same things by their secret acts. And Pharaoh's heart became hard. He would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said. Okay, then chapter 8, I'll read verse 5 to 8. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, stretch out your hand with your staff over the streams and canoes and ponds and make frogs come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt and the frogs came up all covered the land. But the magicians did the same things by their secret acts. They also made frogs come up on the land of Egypt. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, pray to the Lord to take the frogs away from me and my people and I will let your people go to offer sacrifices. So children, the plague of blood is the first plague, the first miracle that Moses and Aaron perform. God tells Aaron, stretch your rod 
upon the waters. Water, the, the river there was called River Nile. What other rivers do you know? Or lakes, you've heard of Lake Victoria and all that. So he put his stuff like this, you know, on River Nile and struck it. And immediately the water changed to blood, children. Oh, can you imagine opening the tap in your house? You want to wash your face, the water is blood. Oh, you put water in a glass from your dispenser or from bottle, the water is blood, you can't drink it. You go to the shower, you open it, oh, you want to enjoy your shower, the water is blood. That is what happened. Every water in Egypt turned into blood. But you know what? Pharaoh did not listen. He was told by Aaron and Moses, let my people go. That was God is saying, after you have seen this miracle, he hardened his heart. And after seven days, Moses and Aaron went back again to Pharaoh and told him, the Lord says, let my people go so that they can worship me. And Pharaoh said, I will not do it. So God had told Aaron to do this other plague. So he was told by God, lift your stuff again. All the streams on all River Nile, on all the ponds, everywhere which has water, and command frogs to come out of this water places, rivers, oceans, everywhere. So frogs came from everywhere, everywhere in Egypt, frogs came. Can you imagine you are sitting eating your food then, croak, croak, frog come to your, to your table. Croak, croak, you are trying to walk, croak, croak everywhere. Those there were frogs all over Egypt, everywhere is frogs. So Pharaoh cried and told Moses, no, 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 take this croak, croak away. I cannot do this anymore. And this time I promise I will let the children of Israel go. So Moses prayed to God and for sure, immediately all the frogs died. So there were big heaps of frogs, dead frogs, and they were smelling so bad. But God had killed all of them. But guess what? As you can imagine, what is happening to Pharaoh? He still hardened his heart. He said, I will not let the children go. Children. What else do we want God to do for us? He has done so much. Let us not wait for God to punish us so that we obey him. And next week, we are going to look at other two plagues that Moses and Aaron are to perform on the Egyptians to at least convince them. But today we are learning that God will continue to show his power upon us. He has done so many miracles. So I pray that children, we can believe in Jesus and believe in God and what he says. Now, our memory verse calls us actually not to harden our hearts when the Lord and his voice speaks to us. Today we are reading from Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 15. That is our memory verse for today, children. Hebrews chapter 3. And verse 15, this is what God's word says. Read with me. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Okay, we just read that bit. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your your hearts. I repeat again, today when you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Okay, so let me pray for you again this morning that your hearts will break before God, that you will listen to him and continue accepting him in your lives. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your powerful word that you had to perform these miracles. You have done so much for us. I pray for these children that you, you help them to believe in you. Thank you because you have saved so many of them. I pray that they can continue trusting and believing in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I will see you next week when we look at the other two plagues that Moses and Aaron aid to perform to convince Pharaoh. God bless you for me and my friend is goodbye and have a blessed week. Thank you, children.